So Shazad Sheikh, motoring Middle East and uh, I'm in the UK. I'm in a Jensen Interceptor and I'm here with Greg Alvarez. Greg, hi. hi. Thanks for letting me drive this car. Tell us a little bit about this. Okay, well this is a 1976, so one of the very last ones. It's the uh, Mark III, um, 7.2 litre V8. Um, is that a Chrysler V8? It is, yeah, Chrysler. 414, big block. Oh wow, that's the way we like them. Yeah. <laughs> And you guys have restored this car? Uh, no, this is actually, um, it's actually quite an original car. I mean, it had a very extensive restoration about 15 years ago. Uh -huh. And it's kind of a barn find in a way, because it's literally just been taken out of storage and we've recommissioned it. So, um, a partial restoration in a way. But it seems very easy to drive. I mean, I've just driven it out of the town centre now. We're in this beautiful place in Oxfordshire. Where are we? Middle Aston or somewhere? Uh, yeah, we're just outside Vista. Outside Vista. So, and um, we've got very light steering. It's an automatic gearbox. What speed is the gearbox? Three speed. Three speed original. Yeah, it's all fine. Excellent. Um, rides really well. Rides really well. The brakes could be... Uh, you, need to, you get used to the brakes, but that's with all the old cars. Yeah, there's a lot of pedal travel. What have you had to do to the car? Uh, we've had to well, obviously service and completely break over the um, Good clean really, uh, new transmission lines, um, a bit of work to talk about because uh, I'm very sloppy. Uh, other than that, it's um, it, like I say, it had a very extensive restoration in 2000, so a lot of the issues were taken care of. I mean, surprisingly little play. I mean, you expect quite a bit of play in old cars, but actually, it's steering is surprisingly responsive in this, you know? Yeah, well, it's a well looked after one, um, anyway. But, you know, it is the old school Grand Tour, and they yeah. are very comfortable. They drive very well. And are there plenty of uh, all these around, or parks and stuff you need to get hold of? Um, they get, they're getting harder, I suppose, because in the 90s when they weren't worth so much money a lot did get scrapped um, but now the popularity is back and along with the popularity comes the price um, but yeah you can still get everything you need and there are specialists doing a good job of making that parts. yeah they're very serviceable and you say prices have gone up now so what, what sort of money do you have to spend to get into something like this uh, this is up 45 um, you can you can get something that you have to drive around a little bit as a roll and restoration from maybe 20 grand. 20 grand, 20,000 pounds. This is 45,000 pounds, yeah, you said, yeah. right? You'll, and for a good one? You'll pay 60 plus now. 60,000 pounds. For a Mark III, which is the most popular, you pay more for Mark 1s and 2s. It shifts, huh? It's yeah, yeah, yeah. shift. And then you'll pay double for an FF. Oh. So the FFs are the, the, were the better spec ones, weren't they? They're the ones with the all-wheel drive. Yeah, four-wheel drive, uh, Max Red ABS. One well, of the first production cars to have ABS. First production performance car with four-wheel drive and first um, production car with ABS. Yeah. Way before Audi. Way before Audi. <laughs> Audi have actually got an FF in their museum. Yeah, brilliant. And what's the power output on something like this? Uh, these are quoted at 330 horsepower yeah. at, the, at the flywheel. So. But not bad at all, not bad. This, I mean, it's such, it's, the one thing I'm finding about it is it's such an easy car to drive. I mean, it's not a small car, it's got a large footprint. Uh, it, it does remind me of old muscle cars. It feels, it's got that sort of feel about it. But it's got a nice, cushy ride, really comfortable, sort of floats along. And the performance is literally like, you just have to breathe on the accelerator pedal and it starts to shift, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Steering is very light, very easy to use. I mean, to be honest, this is a daily driver, isn't it? How reliable are these? Sorry? How reliable are these? Um, well, from, from factory, to be honest, they work great. But as, um, you know, like I say, as their popularity has gained, um, enthusiasts have come up with um, ways of getting around the biggest problems, which is mainly overheating and then starting issues. So, like this car, it's been with a bigger radiator and fast one start motor, and that's already, you know, taken care of a lot of the issues. They're well looked after. There's no reason why they why they shouldn't be uh, something that you could drive daily if you wanted to. So with the bigger radiators, does that does that completely solve the heating issues? Yeah, bigger radiators and bigger fans. That's what yeah. we always do every time. If we, very rare you'll find one with a standard radiator now, but if you do, it's the first thing you've got to do. That's great. This is fantastic. Thanks so much for letting me drive this. This has been a fantastic experience. 
Um, we've got something slightly more tastier to drive as well, haven't you? We have, yeah. Cool, well let's maybe give that a run, eh? Okay. My name is Greg Alvarez from a company called Bavaris. This is our Jensen FF, Silver Slavington. Just want to take a minute to talk you through some of the features. So it's a 1969 car, complete bare metal nut and bolt restoration with obviously a few modifications. Firstly, you'll notice no paint, just bare metal lacquer, exposing all the lead loading, all the bodywork that's gone into it over a thousand hours. The uh, Matching numbers block, but with a Dyer's supercharger. All period rest, all period modifications, um, and putting out about 600 horsepower. Everything else is concourse, um, from the chrome, the headlights, very much a standard restoration, just with a tweak. Taken what was normal and made it mental. Um, moving around, we've got the um, completely redone coilovers, um, based on the standard suspension just gives it a little bit more road holding ability um, and also we want it as low as possible. So now Craig we're in this monster of a machine and um, I can't help but notice, I literally can't help but notice, <laughs> there's something protruding from the bonnet. Would you like to tell us about that? Yeah okay so we've got um, obviously starting from top we've got the air filters We've got the Demon double pump for carburettors, and then the biggest problem of all is the massive supercharger sitting on top of the <laughs> standard block. Wow, literally, a car has disappeared. I tell you, I've driven a lot of stuff, I've driven everything from single seaters, I've driven all kinds of ways. I've driven a 1920s blower, Bentley blower, but uh, I've never driven anything that's got an engine that actually doesn't allow you to see where you're going. <laughs> This is quite extraordinary. What an incredible experience. And it's loud, huh? I don't know where to look. I, you know, I, we, we were just talking in the other car and we were talking about how good the visibility is <laughs> in these old cars, right? Because the, the pillars are so thin and you look around, you see everything. I, I, I can see to the right and to the left of me, maybe behind, but it's, it's the front I'm having trouble with. But my God, doesn't it sound great? Yeah. But I'll tell you what, like you were saying, it sounded even better when we were following it. Yeah. Oh, ho, 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 ho. So this is what 600 plus pounds for the torque and 600 plus horsepower. Yeah. Where did that come in from? Uh, oh, pretty quick. Yeah, I mean you're pretty much you're making uh, you're making about 550 pounds of torque from about 2,000 RPM. So wow, you've got the torque all the way through the rev range. And the peak horsepower is at 6,000 RPM, which obviously in the three-speed auto you're not you're not really making it. You're making huge uh, yeah. mile per hour numbers. What else are you going to be doing to this car? Well, the plan is so we're only running about six six pound a piece at the moment. We're going to double that to 12. We've got 
this piece of a car on these windy little roads, it feels like it should be a straight line specialist, right? Yeah. What sort of you know, timing do you think you can get out of this? Well, I remember around sort of 12, 13 seconds, 4 miles. 12, 13 seconds? Yeah. Feels like it could be better than that. Well, maybe. I'll we'll have to see. I mean, obviously. It's Hasn't important. been run yet? No. Yeah, very firm accelerator feel. The ride is surprisingly supple, very, very smooth. Steering again, very, very light in this car. And again, surprisingly responsive. Um, I think the brakes are a bit better in this car as well. I haven't had yeah. much opportunity to use them, but yeah, definitely they come in earlier on this car than on the other one. Yeah. It also, am I right in saying the car feels stiffer? Yeah, it's much more solid, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, literally, you can feel it. You know, there's very little flex. I mean, obviously, there's some rattles and squeaks, but the whole body of the car feels very, very strong. How much work have you had to do to that? Uh, to, to the suspension? To the body. To the body? Uh, well, uh, over standard, nothing, but we have replaced pretty much every panel other than the wings, the front panel and the rear panel. So, new roof. So, this is so this is how it would have come out of the, the factory, for example, in yeah, terms of the body? The body is, yeah. We've done, the whole idea of the car is to, is to not modify it so drastically that we've had to cut any holes other than in the bonnet or modify anything else. Uh, to make it um, pass where you couldn't take it back. So that's the plan. Eventually this will go back to a concourse restored standard car. Really? Yeah. You're going to put this back to a restored? Obviously that goes. Yeah, that goes. Yeah. <laughs> but why would you? I mean, it's such a spectacular machine. I mean, the looks that this thing gets. People whip out their phones wherever it goes. This is an extraordinary car, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, we well, don't know. We don't know when that will happen, it could be right. years, but it will happen at some point. You know, the provision is there if it yeah, needs to go back to Scotland. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the FF, so it's got four, it's got the actual all-wheel drive, same all-wheel drive that the car came out of the factory with. Yeah. And same ABS you said, it's got the original ABS on it as well. Yeah, original Max Rep valve. Yeah. It's fantastic, I mean it's, it's an incredible beast. What an absolute privilege and a joy to drive something like this. And, you know, it's just, if, if we can get past seeing, if I had x-ray vision, this would be perfect. No, it's probably lead line though, isn't it? It's probably got lead in it. <laughs> so even that ain't gonna work. So one final personal problem before the roundabout. Wow, absolutely spectacular, splendid. Thank you so much for letting us drive this. This has been a hell of an experience. Well, thanks so much for building these crazy machines and for introducing them to us and I tell you what we hope so much to see this in the Middle East one day we'd love to see one of these in Dubai it would be hilarious